Hello everyone. Uh, what I've got here in front of you is quite a rare item actually, um, I think. It's uh, the Sega Mega Jet, which you can see from the box here, which I'm just going to tip up and bring towards the screen. So you can see, it looks like a Sega Mega Drive, well it is a Sega Mega Drive essentially, it's called the Mega Jet. Um, but it looks like a controller of some kind, but it's actually the console and the controller built into one. Um, so it, <coughs> excuse me, it says on the top here, it says for uh, use for sale and use only in Japan. And I guess it's got a model number as well on there. The actual side of the case looks like so. I go all the way around, it just gives more pictures I guess. Same kind of pictures of the actual device itself. And then on the back, kind of strange Japanese style cartoony drawings. Basically saying... Well, showing how the device is portable, how you can take it and play with a normal controller and the Mega Jet itself into your television, and it's easily storable as well. And here's a kind of diagram saying, okay, power into this into the device, cartridge into the top, your uh, connector out into your TV, and a second controller in if you want to have two-player gaming as well. Uh, most of all, the rest of the writing is in Japanese. So this was, I believe, released around 1993 time, and it was originally rented uh, as a it was a, a rental device on Japanese airlines, and they did release a consumer version in 2000. Uh, sorry, in 1994. Um, not sure for how much. I think it was about 125 dollars, something like that. Um, but yeah, it was originally for Japanese airlines, so people could go on long haul flights or whatever else, and they would have little LCD screens in the seats. And uh, you could rent out these devices and play your Sega Mega Drive games, I guess, if you brought your own games on board. Or there was a selection like Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Monaco GP and stuff that you could uh, play that were rentable, I guess, on the plane itself as well. It's not a device I was really aware of. It only came across it recently, I must admit. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen too many of them online or available, so I believe it's pretty rare. Um, you know, the box has had some scuff marks over the years, I guess. But it's in pretty pretty good condition, I think. So I'm going to do an unboxing, and uh, we'll have a look, and I'll get it turned on as well, and we'll see what it can do. I guess if you have a Mega Drive, you pretty much already know what it's going to do. So anyway, first things first, the actual outer sleeve. Put that to one side, and we get a plastic, or sorry, cardboard insert, and we have the Mega Jet manual and some kind of item number, maybe that's an item number to say what model it is or what release it was, I'm not quite sure, 383 can't read Japanese as you can probably guess um, so this is still sealed which is quite nice I'm guessing there you go Sega, probably Mega Jet, the model number and um, yeah that's, uh, that's the manual no point really looking at it as I can't read it uh, so this is the console itself so if we pull this out, you can see, I'll try and bring this to this, the camera. So this is the Sega Mega Jet. So you've got your D-pad, your standard D-pad, got a power LED, uh, reset button, start button, and six button controller as well. This is all a plastic mold, nothing else really moves on the underside. You've got a volume control, earphone, input, second controller for two player, um, input. On the side we have the mode button which generally doesn't get used and on the other side we've got the power, the on and off. On the back we see the serial number of the device, uh, Sega Mega Jet. Uh, use with a certain AC adapter only, that's fine. The model number rating is 7 watts and a couple of patent information or patent information. And then on the top itself we can see there's the actual uh, input for the cartridge. We've got the power on this side here, which you can try and see in the light. And then you, it's like a uh, it's like a DIN socket or whatever else uh, for um, for I can't really see if I can get any light in there. As you can see, but it's obviously the output to the TV. So this is what it feels like. This is what it's like in the hand. It's um, awkward <laughs> to say the least. Uh, not the most ergonomically designed controller, I must admit, but again, it's a console in the hand in the mid-90s, which is uh, pretty revelation or, uh, revelatory, I guess, uh, at the time. Um, buttons feel quite responsive, 
D-pad's quite nice still, even after all this time. Uh, so let's go into the rest of the box. I'll put this down here. Uh, so next in line, we have the actual connector to the TV. So we've got pretty standard, in fact. So here's the the DIN connector, which is there's pretty much only two connect two cables in there, two um two connectors in there, if you can see. Uh, let's see, can you see that? Yeah, you can see uh, a little bit. Um, but here's the other side. So phono connector, standard phono connector. So yellow is obviously video. White is obviously one of the audio, but there is no other audio. So this, is, I guess, is a mono output device. So there's no stereo like the uh, the original Mega Drive. Um, they've obviously cut that out as a needless requirement. And we get the uh, controller as well. So the, uh, the sorry, the power adapter, not the controller. AC adapter. Uh, it says Mega Drive 2 on there. The Japanese logo for Mega Drive 2, and you got the two pronged plug on the back. So that's it, that's the unboxing video of the Mega Jet. Here it is again. So, what we'll do is I'm going to plug in the actual DIN connector, which actually requires more effort than I thought it would. It's kind of awkward and you don't want to feel like you're breaking it. And we'll get this ready. So, okay, so if you bear with me for uh, one second, I'll get this set up and uh, I'll show you how we're going to play some games on it. Okay. Okay, so I've got the MegaJet set up and the TV. Basically, I've just hooked it up straight into SCART on the TV. So it's not going through any processing uh, processors like a FrameMeister or any kind of uh, SCART to HD TV converter or anything like that. It's going to be pretty pure. So. The signal will look pretty bad on this TV because it's obviously HD TV. Uh, I haven't bothered to get the little 14 inch uh, CRT that I've got out in this instance because yeah, I'm just going to show this off basically. Uh, I've got a selection of games here that I'm going to kind of just ma mainly sh mainly show um, the device with but uh, uh, you'll see why some of the Master System games will be uh, listed there for a second. But you'll see some of the Sonic games I've got here like there's the Genesis Sonic the Hedgehog, the Mega Drive Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the European uh, two and three, sorry, the American Sonic the Hedgehog one. More importantly, considering it's a Japanese Mega Jet, here's Sonic the Hedgehog one, two, and three, the Japanese versions. And I particularly like. I just wanted to show you these because I particularly like the. Obviously, the artwork is different on them, but uh, I particularly like Sonic the Hedgehog two, uh, for this reason, which says on the box a very profound statement. If I try and zoom in here. Don't just sit there and waste your precious time. When you want to do something, do it right away. Do it when you can. It's the only way to live a life without regrets. So there you go. Sonic the Hedgehog says, don't live your life without regrets. The Japanese artwork is quite cool. Um, I also like the cartridges. So everybody's kind of seeing the standard Genesis Mega Drive cartridge. You know, the, the shape, what it looks like. Um, but the Japanese ones are nicer. They're kind of more rounded, a bit more finesse added to the actual cartridge itself. Um, which I, I quite like. So yeah, um, the uh, Mega Jet is literally just plugged in directly into the TV which I've got here and what I'll do now is I'll just uh, swap this over, so bear with me for a second and we'll turn it on. Oh actually before I do, um, so obviously accessory wise you can add on a second controller underneath there, you know it's quite simple. Your second joypad will go straight in you know, the connector is there, quite in, no problem. Some people have asked if, um, on forums I've seen before, if one of the 32X will go into the device. So here's the 32X. Uh, the answer is it will fit on the top into the cartridge slot, but these prevent the actual 32X sliding in correctly, which you can just about see here why. They're right over the edge. Um, so the connector for the actual uh, telly uh, is a bit of an issue. So if you have an angled connector, maybe that will be better and you might be able to force it in there. I have got one, um, which it looks like this, but I don't want to force it on the MegaJet. The MegaJet's worth too much money for me um, without trying to force any of those connectors in. Um, but possibly, it's it's a possibility you might be able to get it in there and then slot the uh, 32X on the top, see whether it would work or not. Not quite sure whether, whether, whether or not, but uh, I don't see any reason why not. 
but then again, who knows. Um, so, yeah, we'll put that to one side for now. Uh, so anyway, yes, uh, let's uh, get this hooked up and I'll show you what it looks like playing some games. Okay, so here we have the TV in front of us. Here is the Mega Jet with Sonic the Hedgehog 1, the Japanese version, plugged in. Anybody who probably knows all these Sonic the Hedgehogs are region free, so it won't be an issue playing a, a different region, I believe, anyway. So this one's obviously the Japanese version for the Japanese console, so it won't be a problem. If I turn it on, there you go, I'm producing the license. Sega. And we get Sega. Start button. Turn the volume on this down a little bit. So yeah, um, here you go. You can see I can. If I move it up here, maybe does that work? Let's see, I can move Sonic around. It's basically just a Mega Drive. Looks exactly like Sonic the Hedgehog. Plays exactly like Sonic the Hedgehog. But all in the palm of your hands with your Sega Mega Jet. Okay, so that's uh, that's Sonic the Hedgehog. If I play the um, American version, the Genesis version, it should play as far as I know. I believe Sonic is all region free, so let's try it and see. Okay, produce play. Yep, that's going to play fine. So uh, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog is region free. Okay. Uh, what I will show you is Super Street Fighter 2, which is, in this instance, the European Mega Drive version. As you can see here. I plop this into the Japanese console and press Start. Or turn it on. Get the usual produced by license, blah blah blah. But now it'll say Warning! Developed for use only with the PAL and French CCAM Mega Drive systems. So, yeah, that kind of uh, blows that one out of the water, I guess. But of course, there are ways around those things. Um, if you've looked at my YouTube channel, I will have done a video of uh, a walkthrough video of the uh, Mega EverDrive, which you know is a little PCB inside, uh, which looks like that. A PCB inside a cartridge, which I can uh, just put back together again quickly. And of course, what that allows you to do then is take ROMs or whatever else and play them on your Mega Drive, um, whatever Mega Drive, your Nomad, anything else. Um, so I'm just going to quickly plug it in here and we'll see. It's running off an SD card slot, obviously. It's going to go through a little bit of a screen routine. And I can select... I'll just zoom in. I can select the Mega Drive. And there's a list of my games that I have already. And we can see Super Street Fighter 2 is on there, the new challengers. I can say I want to play that. And it's going to load the ROM up. And I can still play the game because it bypasses any region checks that the game might have in that particular piece of uh, hardware and allows the game to uh, to load up correctly. So there you go, there's Super Street Fighter 2 um, running fine on the Sega Mega Jet. Could you just uh, set that off? There you go, so that is the uh, the Sega Mega Jet. It's quite a, like I say, quite a rare console. Um, I'm gonna get kicked by Ken now, but we'll leave that happen. Uh, quite a rare console, um, but I think anybody who's a Sega collector would uh, should pretty much try and get one. It's a, I think it's a really nice piece of kit. It, you know, it's different. It, it's the precursor before the uh, the Nomad. Obviously, the Nomad was the handheld uh, Sega Mega Drive with the screen built in, uh, which looks like so. Here's the Sega Nomad, um, and obviously all the hardware, the guts that were defined in the Sega Mega Jet basically became the guts of the Sega Nomad, except the screen was added. Um, so yeah, I think it's a nice little piece of uh, hardware just to, to keep hold of.
So thanks for watching and uh, if you like this video, uh, please rate and subscribe. Thank you.